Hello, and welcome to the CYSO Audio Interface Tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be unpacking and installing your audio interface to your computer, making the necessary connections, and showing some great features that come with your audio interface. What is an audio interface? It is an external audio card for your PC connected through a USB-C cable to an open USB port on your computer. It allows you to play audio and input audio. Its features are of very low latency because of a driver known as an ASIO. It also features professional level sampling rates and recording quality. Connecting your audio interface to your computer is very easy. Just connect the USB cable to an open port. This is the backside of a Focusrite Solo. You'll notice there's only one place for the connection of the USB cable, and they give you an output for speakers that are a quarter inch output. Once you've connected the device to your computer, a screen will pop up. It's the Let's Get Started screen. Click on that screen to go to the Focus White website so you can download the drivers for your device. It's also a very good suggestion to register your new hardware at that time. It will allow you to download other nice software that comes with your audio interface. Once you've completed installing the drivers, you'll get a Focusrite symbol in your taskbar. This is called the ASIO panel. It tells you what the sampling rate and buffer size are for your unit. These can be changed, but it comes with a default that will allow you to watch YouTube videos or access other audio through your computer. This sampling rate is very important because this is one of the things that you can do to change the sampling rate for when you want to go to Jamkazam to increase your latency or actually decrease your latency. Let's talk about microphones right now. There are three types of microphones, but the microphones and condenser microphones. If you bought a bundle, your bundle came with a condenser microphone. If you purchased your microphone, uh, you may have purchased a dynamic microphone. All microphones have a certain function that they're really good at, but you do need to know the difference between a dynamic microphone and a condenser microphone, and it's not just always the way that they look, because as you notice, this handheld microphone looks a lot like this handheld microphone, but one is a condenser microphone. The big difference is condenser microphones require something called phantom power, or an additional 48 volts for the signal to get processed. This is what your microphone would look like on a microphone stand, and there are many varieties. I would suggest, since you have such a nice microphone with your bundle, that you go ahead and get a nice microphone. Making sure that you're always careful in installing your microphone into the, cave, into the stand. Most microphone stands are pretty universal as to far as to what kind of clip that they will accept. The clip, however, varies on the kind of microphone that you have, but no worries, your microphone will come with a specific clip for that microphone that will attach onto any universal microphone stand. Connecting your microphone cable to your microphone, you would connect the female end of the microphone cable to the male end of the microphone. Push firmly until it clicks, to release the cable, you must depress the pin release and pull firmly. Connecting 
Your condenser microphone is the same procedure. Connect the female microphone cable to the male pin of the microphone, push firmly. On some microphones, you'll find that the pin connects to the back side. You have to turn it to release the microphone cable. To make sure that it doesn't accidentally come out, you have to depress the pins and pull firmly. Connecting your microphone cable to your audio interface, you would take the male microphone cable and connect it to the female input. On the Focusrite Solo, there's only one place in which you can connect that microphone. This is the 212 model. It has two inputs for microphones. Now, if you're not receiving a signal, it could be that you're using a condenser mic and you haven't pressed in the phantom power button. When that lights up, you'll notice that the green halo mic signal level will start to register. It should go into the green. If it goes into the red, then it's going to distort. So just move it back so that the loudest volumes just go into the green, maybe slightly into the yellow. Take the headphone jack and plug it into the input with the symbol for the headphones. Now this model... This is the front panel of your Scarlett Solo. This is your microphone input. This is the volume adjustment for your microphone. If you have a condenser microphone, you need to depress the phantom power. 48V. The air feature adds a nice equalization to the quality of sound of the audio interface. This is unique to Focusrite. The second channel is for a quarter inch instrument like a guitar or a bass or a keyboard. The solo has one monitor button that can control the volume for both the front headphone jack, and the back speaker outputs. The direct monitor button is used when recording. However, during Jam Kazam, it needs to be in the off position. Why do you need headphones when using Jam Kazam? Well, let's just take a look at the signal path. It starts with the, the sound source, a violin, cello, or some instrument, and that sound gets picked up into a microphone. That signal gets sent to the audio interface. It converts it from an analog signal to a digital signal and sends it to the computer. Now in the computer, if you're using something like Jam Kazam or you're recording along with previously recorded sounds, it will add additional computer audio it will go back into the audio interface. Now, at this point, if you use speakers, the sound will go back into the audio source and get picked back up by the microphone, completing a loop, one called a feedback loop. And this is a very bad thing. So when using Jam Kazam or recording and having open microphones, you need to use headphones so that the sound source stops at the headphone. Some additional software that comes with your Focusrite Solo are free DAWs, virtual instruments, and virtual effects and plugins. A DAW stands for Digital Audio Workstation. It's kind of like a digital tape recorder that can do so much more. Virtual instruments are kind of like synthesizers but without the keyboards. Now they can be triggered by something like a keyboard or some sort of controller. And a virtual effect or plugin is something that you can add to the sound after you've recorded it like reverb or equalization. Some of the software that comes free with your Focusrite Solo is a DAW called Amplify Studio. Another different type of DAW called Ableton Live or Reason Studios. Krotos is a pack of 
virtual instruments, as well as Focusrite drums and addictive keys. The red plugin suite and soft tube time are effects plugins that come with your unit. Let's take a look at how useful a digital audio workstation can be. This is a digital audio workstation. This happens to be Cakewalk by Band Labs. It is completely free and something that the students can use if they have an audio interface. It allows them to play virtual instruments and record just like a tape recorder, only completely digitally. This is the console view. It allows to see the balance of the student's tracks. You can also solo a track. Solo a second track. And add tracks as you would like. This comes in very handy if a student wants to isolate only their part from an arrangement. Other views include the staff view, and the piano roll. If a student wishes to isolate their part and slow down the tempo, they can click the tempo and add in the tempo they would like. They can also practice with a metronome and they can isolate to only their part, say first violin. or slow it down even more.